and what is up everybody it is your boy fire thank you once again for tuning into another video man it is december first of december getting that holiday spirit in you know what i mean we're gonna start off with a question and answer straight from instagram so if you ever have any questions feel free to just you know what i mean wait for that questionnaire drop your comment you know what i mean and i'll get to it but Nonetheless, man, you know, definitely make sure to smash like as usual. Check out the links below. All sorts of goodies, man. All of our templates and presets best in the game. We've got some cool vocal courses as well. If you want to learn how to mix and record like a pro, we also have links to Lander Mastering, which is a fully automated mastering suite. The suite enables you to get your songs up to that Spotify, Tidal, YouTube loudness that everyone so much desires. But you know what I mean? Let's hop straight into it. Be here to answer your questions. Let's get it. Okay, first question from RGB. And he asks, Slate Digital, Metatune or Antares Autotune? I might as well answer this in a way of what is the best autotune to use. And in my opinion, it won't be any one plugin. It'll be the plugin that you use all the time, right? Autotune pretty much is like a car, right? If you jump into a different car, it's gonna feel a little bit different, right? It's not gonna feel the same as maybe the car that you are accustomed to, right? So for example, if you like driving Honda, you're always gonna know what a Honda feels like. You're gonna be able to, you know what I mean, drive the car a bit better maybe, right? Whereas if you jump in a Mercedes, you know what I mean, everything might feel a little bit different, right? So my best advice for when messing around with Autotune or when wanting to switch to another one is just to simply spend a lot of time using it right so there are a few things that you're going to want out of the auto tune in order to use it while recording for example low latency okay good sound easy to tweak okay it shouldn't be much more complex than that okay some people like to do post um, melodyne editing that's perfectly fine as well you can't really use that in real time but if you are going to be recording with auto tune um, you definitely want it to be low latency and easy to use okay so my personal favorite tunes to use are both the ones that you're talking about right you just said slate metatune love it love the way it sounds i have done a tutorial breakdown of it you can just you can just punch in fry the producer slate digital you'll find it or fry uh, metatune or whatever and you will find it um you know i think it sounds great it's very easy to use so if you are wanting to jump to something simpler than Antares auto tune then that's definitely going to be a good um, bet you know what i mean slate's bundle as well is pretty good i don't know how much it is these days but you know it's a good deal so if you want something part of a deal then definitely check that out personally i'm really using Antares auto tune i've had uh, auto tune for so long now and i just record into it it's in my bass template when i start recording it's there um if i'm recording a guitarist sometimes right they may not be perfectly in tune i'll use auto tune right it's got that instrument function on there and it really is the og in the game 8.1 is definitely my go-to forever didn't really like or don't really like the newer ones um but i'm always going to be on that 8.1 but again if, you, if i went to a studio and they only had meta 2 i would just use it right i think slate stuff sounds really good so hopefully that answers your question again doesn't need to be paid right you can just use picture stock in fl studio man i used to use it all the time before i got my antares uh, key you know what i mean so you know mess around have fun and just record into autotune all day every day it's what all the pop singers are doing it's what all the rappers are doing and it's just the way that the industry sounds these days so don't miss out hop on that autotune wave let's get it shirak goat asks rode nt1a good mic i think the rode nt1 is a really good mic okay um you know rode made some of the first really good base model microphones what do i mean by that well rode were one of the first companies to really get that kind of cross point right meaning you know one side would be good price the other side would be good quality right i think they really stand up there you know in the top 80 percent of good mics under like 400 dollars i don't know how much the set costs these days calculated for inflation things are crazy right now i don't know how much things cost but you know it's just a mic that a lot of my clients have used it's a mic that a lot of people just buy in general and there's a reason for it right it just has a really good sound it sounds really good um bumping it into the focus right and um yeah overall it's a decent mic okay i wouldn't go wrong with it again if you didn't want to get the road you could get something like the se x1 i love se if you wanted to buy something a bit more expensive the se i I think it's the 2200 is something we have in the studio somewhere i don't know where it is right now but it's a good mic as well and uh you know i would personally just avoid maybe the entry level audio technical mics 
not the biggest fan of them not that they're bad or anything i just find they're a bit sterile you know what i mean they lack a bit of flavor a lot of people will say that the road has a bit of a kind of high-end trebly sound i do agree with that if you have a really bright voice in general i'll probably avoid the road and go for like the se the se is a bit darker it sounds a bit more vintage whereby the road sounds like a brand new very flat mic that is very much capable of um you know getting that result that you want so yeah man check it out it's a good mic um i can't go wrong with it if i had to just buy a mic i would probably buy whatever is available again i think most condenser mics sound pretty good today i'd probably just avoid if you are wanting good quality just to avoid the super chinese mics right the no brand amazon mics not that they will give you the worst result but you do want something that you can grow into so road you're going to be able to grow into se you're going to be able to grow into some of the more um you know the kind of next level audio technical mics you can grow into the neumann 103 102 good mics all good mics get what you need to record and get recording let's go all right calio asks how to gain stage a two-track beat with your beat enhancer so there's headroom for the vocals that is a damn good question he is referring to the almighty beat enhancer which you can check link will be in the description the beat enhancer is pretty much emulating a console channel strip input strip you can use it for more than just beats you can use it for vocals you can use it for a little bit of mastering right but the idea is that you have an input section and then an output section right in the middle of that you got your eq and things like that you also have your um you know input transformer and i think output transformer but you know it, it sounds really good right so my advice on how to do that is to actually drop the beat before hitting the beat enhancer so that it's kind of acting like it's minus 18 so drop the beat about 10 db is going to give you about minus 18 if it's a really loud beat drop it even more and then do all of the gain staging in the beat enhancer okay that way you can then hit the input drive it's going to hit the saturation internally and then you're going to be able to do all of your eq with enough headroom to then exit um the beat enhancer with a good result right so it's simple keep it as analog as possible meaning hit it you can even put up a, a vu meter right and then just make sure it's hitting below zero vu do all your stuff and then just match that up with your beat right but you want to make sure that you've got headroom again to do your whole mix and then do your mastering or your limiting loudness just to get things back to you know what i mean normal i have done a video on this so definitely just punch in uh fry the producer beat enhancer i did like 10 beats or something in one video so check that out let's go og carl asks how is the audio industry lately well i think that is a much more in-depth question right i think what one needs to ask in any industry is how is the economy doing how is you know what i mean the u.s economy doing especially right because the u.s economy really dictates how much people are spending around the world and right now as we've seen for the past year really since covid people have actually been spending less so all industries really have been suffering a little bit so what does that mean for the average person well if you're working in any sort of company you've had you know some people have been laid off right other people have been you know just getting less jobs whatever it is the audio industry is no different we definitely have seen certain clients not be able to follow through with certain jobs it does suck but my best advice for everyone out there in any industry is to always have a good cash pile or cash reserve so that when times get tough at least then you are sitting on a pile of cash that you haven't spent that then you can use to either pay employees uh pay off your your debts if you got rental every month you got to pay you know what i mean you got excess cash to do that um you know and it is what it is right i think if you have cash at this time it's good because you can buy plugins for discounts right there are a lot of sales going on things like that but you know again it does suck for people who are maybe trying to get into the industry so i would say that a lot of people say you know what i mean in in um, trading and things like that that you know uh downtime in the market is a good time to build right and what i mean by that is you know definitely spend now not really spending money on things that you don't need but more so spending money on things like your education investing in your own business right so if you are building a recording studio it's definitely always a good time to maybe save up a bit of cash and then go buy someone else's speakers go buy their audio interface right a lot of people are going to have a lot of sales and you should take advantage of that okay it's definitely a good time to learn don't feel discouraged if you aren't getting clients and things like that just keep working every day and you know one day when the economy comes back and everything is good then you're going to be centered and ready to get all of that business in so you know what i mean uh, you know audio industry definitely has taken a downturn but it is what it is we still have a lot of clients on our side that are still working because we put in those five ten years of work and we're still getting those checks so you know that's just what it is but again keep building keep working every day let's get it question from i think azaho and he's asking which is personally your favorite preamp from a preset pack i would be thinking you are referring to the 
Fry's Digital Preamp or maybe Fry's Vocal Enhancer, I don't know which one. But if you would ask me about both plugins, I'd probably say that from the Vocal Enhancer, in every video you see me using the Farai's Tube Console preamp. I think this just sounds amazing. It's my personal favorite one and was the first preset that I made testing on a whole bunch of different material, a whole lot of different vocals from different people with different mics and things like that. That's personally my favorite. Um, I just love the way it sounds. But the way that I would lay out the use of my plugins is that if you don't have an external preamp, like I've got the Neve right there, then I would recommend getting the Farai's Digital Preamp amp and then going for any flavor that you like right because all of them are going to be a little bit different maybe stick to one that's more conservative and not like a super like the gritty boy or something like that is, is i think one of the presets and one of the plugins um that's more aggressive you want to just take something that's going to give you that little bit of extra saturation that sounds good that works you know what i mean stack that up first and then add the fries vocal enhance and then mix that together and i swear to you you're going to be getting a really nice result something that sounds very much analog right again digital is digital but we can still get that sound no one's gonna care right if you use the neve or not people are just gonna care that the vocals in your face it sounds good right so you know definitely stack those plugins up if you're using one of those plugins shout out to you and uh yeah keep working every day so yeah man those are pretty much all of the questions that we have time for today i hope you learned something in this video nice quick and simple you know what i mean definitely comment below what content you'd like to see for this month and then next year as well so that i can plan the year out you know what i mean what type of tutorials are you guys and girls trying to see you're trying to learn more about analog gear what is it that you want to see right um i'm definitely here to cater to y'all so um yeah man as always check out the links below to the vocal recording course vocal mixing course you know vocal enhancer digital preamp right all the good stuff check out the pro tools course as well if you are looking to as i said build and invest in yourself definitely learn how to use pro tools right i learned how to use pro tools and i was able to get a really sick job a couple of years ago and uh, it really helped my career so yeah man, as always stay well keep working every day check out the next one peace out